Peace, it's Mo from Clever Chrono, and here's what I learned this week in the world of watches. This week, London's Metropolitan Police went to the airwaves to talk about their undercover sting operations in central London designed to take down watch thieves. There are several pieces of CCTV footage of undercover police officers being lured by watch thieves that show police officers swarming the unknowing criminals in the middle of the act. Years ago, I lived in London for a little while, and it's a cultural norm and pretty common knowledge that London is one of the most surveilled cities in the world. So it's sort of hard for me to understand how many of these guys are getting away with these thefts. But now that the word's getting out about these undercover stings for watch thieves in central London, I'm sure it's going to cut back on watch theft. In one of these stings, it was reported that one of the undercover police actually started laughing as he was being robbed because he knew what was about to go down shortly thereafter. I was giving a commissioner's accommodation to one of the officers involved um, a, a few months ago and um, he was telling me that how much he enjoyed the operations. I think he's obviously got a screw loose, but he's actually saying as, as he was being robbed and he was being manhandled, it was getting quite violent. He said he actually started laughing because he knew what was about to land on all the other people around him. <laughs> Criminals need to be afraid that they're going to get caught. And this is about uh, creating some of that surprise factor for them. Different tactics that keep them on their toes. According to Met Police, in the last five years, over 29,000 watches were reported stolen in London. But they also reported that from summer 2022 to summer 2023, there had been a 50% reduction in reports of attempted watch thefts and robberies. It's been a couple years since my last visit to London and I did wear my watches out in the streets and I felt okay. But I also feel like if you're from the city or you're familiar with city life anywhere in the world, that you have to be aware of your surroundings and just have your wits about yourself in general. This week I had a chance to hang out with Giancarlo Roselli, founder of Atlanta Watch Society. Giancarlo showed up with his Rolex Daytona as well as his Atlanta Watch Society limited edition Formex and I was rocking my Tudor Black Bay. We had a great conversation sharing our passion for watches, and we're trying to figure out how we can collaborate on some new content to bring to the people this year. This week, Arnold Schwarzenegger was detained at Munich Airport for his failure to report a watch that he brought into the country for the purpose of fundraising for a charity that he supported. It was reported that the watch that retails for around $100,000 ultimately was auctioned off for $300,000 for this charity. This week, the publisher Asuline released a new book, Rolex, The Impossible Collection. This book was handcrafted in a luxury leather clamshell case with metal plaque, is 194 pages long and has 200 illustrations outlining some of Rolex's most dynamic releases over the years. I definitely would enjoy the opportunity to check this book out, but its $1,200 price tag is pretty insane. Vacheron Constantin released a new watch for ladies this week, a fully gold quartz overseas. This 18 karat pink gold piece with diamond bezel is 33 millimeters in diameter, seven and a half millimeters thick, and has 50 meters of water resistance. It also comes with three strap variations, a gold bracelet, a leather bracelet, and rubber variation. Even though this watch is all gold and has a diamond bezel, considering it's a quartz movement, I do find its $51,500 price tag to be a little shocking. This week, Zenith released two boutique-only pilot watches, one time and date only, and another time date chronograph. The pilot big date flyback is 42.5 millimeters thick, comes with the El Primero 3652 movement, and has 60 hours of power reserve. The pilot automatic is 40 millimeters, comes with the El Primero 3620 movement, and also has 60 hours of power reserve. This week, Omega released a new version of the Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8 Speedmaster. This ceramic timepiece comes with a skeletonized dial that has a laser etched sculptural effect of the moon on its dial and on its movement that can be seen in its display case back. 
a new element of this model that some people love and some people hate that I think is kind of cool is the new three-dimensional Saturn V rocket sculpted from titanium at the nine o'clock subdial. This piece cost an eye-watering $14,300 if you'd like to add it to your collection. So that's it for me from this week in the world of watches. But if you found any of this news interesting or if you have some news to share, please let me know in the comments. Till next time.